I've tested 10 top Enduro forks to find out which is best. These are the MRP Ribbon Air, the Olin's RXF 36 Evo, the Cane Creek Helm Air, the X-Fusion Trace 36 HLR, the DVO Diamond, the DT Swiss F5351, Fox's 36 Factory Grip 2, Marzocchi's Bomber Z1, the RockShox Yari RC Debonair, and the RockShox Lyric RC2. Obviously, we haven't tested every single fork on the market, but we wanted to test forks that have changed for this model year or that we haven't tested before. You can find reviews for several other forks on BiteRadar.com. To keep things consistent and comparable, I tested 160mm 29er forks, all with 51mm offsets, and all with air springs. Coil forks have some inherent advantages and disadvantages, and they're becoming popular with some small brands but pretty much all forks are available with an air spring and that's what most people tend to buy, so that's what we've tested here. Now before we get on to how the forks fared, it's worth talking about how I tested them all. To keep things consistent, I tested all 10 forks on the same bike and kept all aspects of the bike setup, including tyre pressure, exactly the same throughout testing. I started by setting up the forks with 20% sag, measured in the same way. Then I did a test which involves bouncing on the fork as hard as I could in the car park without leaving the ground and measuring how much travel I got at the forks. I was aiming for around 135 millimeters of travel and if necessary, I adjust the progressivity or the number of volume spaces in the fork to get it as close as possible to that kind of target. Then finally, I set the rebound damping to match the return speed of the shock, which didn't change throughout testing. Of course, this was only a baseline setting, and I changed all these parameters, as well as the compression damping, throughout testing to try and get the most out of them for the terrain in question. Some of these forks have ridden for weeks on end all over the world and even raced on them, and from this I've learned virtually nothing about how they perform relative to one another. So crucially for this test, I tested on four tracks that I know really well and which don't change swapping forks in between runs so that I could get a direct back-to-back -back comparison. It's really only when you test like this that you can be sure that the differences you're feeling are down to the fork and not due to changes in conditions or how you're riding. I picked four tracks which offer a wide range of terrain, everything from small stutter bumps to big jumps and rocks. Basically all the types of terrain you'd want to ride on forks like these. So that should give you a brief idea of the methodology. So let's get into how the forks actually performed. And then finally, I'll let you know which I think is the best and why. So starting with the worst performing fork in the test, that was the MRP Ribbon Air. This was the lightest fork on test and it also has a handy dial which allows you to adjust how progressive or hard to bottom out the fork is on the trail side. However, that dial doesn't work in the same way as volume spaces. Basically, it controls the point at which air is allowed to escape into a, an additional chamber. And this actually makes the air spring somewhat speed sensitive. And I think this makes it harder to predict what the fork is doing. On the one hand, the fork would lack support during prolonged braking. But at the same time, when you hit something fast, it would feel quite harsh. Alongside that air spring, I think that the damping and chassis flex play a role in this too. But as an overall package, I found the MRP was both uncomfortable and unsupportive at times. And it occasionally took a long time to recover from deep in the stroke, even with the rebound set quite fast. And this had me swerving offline after heavy landings several times, until I learned to ride much more defensively off the back of the bike. So despite spending a long time experimenting with all the different settings, I couldn't find a setup which was predictable and comfortable. Next up is the Olin's RXF 36 Evo. Now the Olin's feels plenty stiff and is very predictable in technical terrain, but over high speed chatter it just doesn't seem to be able to react fast enough. Even once I'd opened up the compression and rebound damping fully, it was still the most uncomfortable fork here on high speed bike park style terrain. And it was the only fork that I couldn't actually make it down one of the test tracks without my hands becoming agonizingly painful. So while it works well for steep terrain, it's just very uncomfortable for bike park style trails. At number eight is the X-Fusion 36 Trace HLR. Now this fork has a coil negative spring along with the air positive spring. 
And what this basically means is that as you increase the pressure in the air spring to suit a heavier rider, you end up with a disproportionately firm beginning stroke relative to the rest of the stroke. This means that for someone of around my weight, I weigh about 86 kilograms, the beginning stroke is really firm. So the fork doesn't sit nicely into its travel to give you good traction when it's lightly loaded. But then when you hit something harder, like a compression, it will use lots of its travel very quickly from that point on. When plowing through rock gardens, the chassis stiffness and the damping felt really impressive, but it's hard to say too much given that the spring just was not right for my weight. Now, if your weight nicely matches that coil negative spring, it could work well for you, but because it's a one size fits all spring, it doesn't really work for a wide range of riders. And that's kind of the whole point of having an air spring. Number seven on this list is the Cane Creek Helm Air. Now we spent more time trying to set up this fort than any of the others by quite a long way. We couldn't make it feel great. So the air spring has a button which allows air to flow from the positive to the negative chambers so that the pressure equalizes. However, if you just inflate the spring and press the button, the off the top sensitivity at the start of the stroke is, is really quite poor. So what you have to do is use a shock pump to release some of the air from the positive so that the fork kind of settles into its travel a bit more. But if you do that too much, you really compromise how much travel the fork has. It's quite hard to get the best compromise between reducing the amount of travel on offer and having a fork that's quite hard off the start of the stroke. I ended up running five PSI less in the positive than the negative chamber, which takes away about five to 10 millimeters of travel and gives you pretty good off the top sensitivity. So traction over roots and things is, is not bad. At first I found the King Creek was really comfortable over bigger rocks and roots, but it was also bottoming out far too easily. Now you can stop it bottoming out by either increasing high speed compression damping or better still increasing the progressivity of the spring. Once I did that enough to stop it bottoming out, it was considerably less comfortable than the best forks on test. And number six is the DVO Diamond. Like the X-Fusion, this has a coil negative spring, but it has a dial that DVO call their OTT adjuster, which basically just allows you to preload that coil negative so that it suits riders of different weights. For me, running 130 PSI in the air spring, that meant fully winding it in. But if you're lighter, you will have to find the right balance between the fork sucking down into its travel and being too firm off the top. Interestingly, the DVO was the only fork which seemed to sort of bed in. It's the only fork that I noticed it getting smoother over small bumps after the first couple of rides. But after that, it had really impressive off the top sensitivity, a nice sort of stuck down feel, so it has lots of traction when you're lightly weighting the fork. There's a nice wide range of compression adjustment too, so it can be pretty comfortable, particularly on small bumps. But when faced with bigger holes and repeated impacts, it just doesn't seem to have the same smoothness and composure of the top scoring forks, no matter what I did with the compression or rebound damping. I think this may be to do with the fork binding when it gets really loaded up hard, but either way, it just doesn't seem to track as predictably as the best forks on test. Kicking off the top five is the DT Swiss F5351. DT Swiss has a web app to help you set up this fork, and in my case, that worked really well, provided me with a really good setting from the get-go. I experimented with different settings, and I did end up speeding up the rebound a bit, but the recommended air pressure was bang on for me. The DT Swiss has a damper which is somewhat position dependent, so the further you get into the stroke, the firmer the compression damping becomes. It also has a little coil spring at the base of the air spring, which is claimed to speed up the transition between compression and rebound. I can't be sure how much difference that little spring makes on its own, but as an overall package, this fork was one of the most comfortable and calm over high frequency, loose chattery trails. However, when it came to slamming into bigger bumps, it transmitted more feedback than the best forks on test. When the fork was really loaded up into a hard pack corner, it seemed to skip um, and wander where the other forks tracked more authoritatively. DT Swiss is saying that this is not designed to be a full on enduro fork, this is more of a trail fork. However, it's one of the heaviest forks here and it just doesn't seem to have the stiffness to compete with the best forks on test.
Now we're getting into the top four forks, it's worth talking about them in two different price categories. RockShox and Fox both offer a cheaper version of their flagship Enduro forks. RockShox with the Yari RC and Fox through their sister brand Marzocchi with the Bomber Z1. Now the Marzocchi has the same basic chassis as a Fox 36, but it uses lower grade aluminium, so it's a little bit heavier. The grip damper is a little bit simpler and the air spring is slightly different too. It has a little bit less negative volume. And this is the biggest difference you'll notice between the Marzocchi and the Fox 36. You need much less pressure in the Marzocchi to get the same amount of sag, but then after sag, it blows through the rest of its travel much more easily, so it feels much more unsettled. Because the Marzocchi has a smaller negative volume than the Fox 36, it's a bit firmer to get going at the start of the stroke and then lacks support in the mid-stroke. You can combat this to a certain extent by adding volume spaces and dropping the pressure. I ended up with three volume spaces in the Marzocchi with much less pressure. And set up like this, the Marzocchi is pretty good in terms of off the top sensitivity and traction over small bumps. And it will support you without bottoming out, but the support comes quite late in the stroke. So it feels a bit sort of hollow as it kind of moves quite quickly and then, then ramps up quite suddenly towards the end. Whereas with the Fox 36, the support comes in much more gradually and smoothly throughout the stroke. But the difference in ride feel between the Marzocchi and the 36 is actually quite subtle, considering the pretty big difference in price between the two forks. Even though the setup I used to get the most out of the forks was quite different. So while it's not surprising that the Z1 is not quite as good as a top-end Fox 36, what's more relevant is whether it's better than the similarly priced RockShox Yari, because both of those are relatively affordable. And number three is the RockShox Yari RC. For 2019 it has the same debonair spring as the RockShox Lyric RC2. That means it settles into the beginning part of its travel as smoothly as the Lyric and more so than anything else on test. That means that when the fork's lightly loaded and kind of pattering across off camber roots or loose stones, the fork feels more stuck down because of that really soft first part of the travel. The difference between the Yari and the Lyric is in the damper. The Yari's motion control damper doesn't have as much low speed support as the Lyric's RC2 damper, which means that when you're braking or coming into a corner, the fork dives through its travel a little bit more easily. But at the same time, when you hit something really hard, like if you slap down on a hard landing or hit a big rock at speed, the fork spikes and it has too much high speed damping so the fork can't move out of the way fast enough, the oil can't flow past the valves quickly enough on those really high shaft speed impacts. And that gives a kind of uncomfortable jarring feeling through the handlebar. But these sorts of very high speed impacts are quite rare. They only happen maybe a handful of times on a run, if that. So the Yari is actually very comfortable, apart from those rare events where it spikes a little bit. I'd say that overall the Marzocchi Z1 is more comfortable over a long run, particularly if there are a lot of square-edged hits and big landings. But I didn't get that kind of consistent hand and finger pain that I got with, for example, the Olins. It was more the occasional impact was a little bit jarring. So while the Z1 is more comfortable in certain situations, the Yari has better low load traction because of that soft beginning stroke. And the support builds more smoothly throughout the mid-stroke, it doesn't have that kind of hollow mid-stroke feeling that the Z1 has sometimes. The Yari is also a bit lighter and, in the UK at least, a fair bit cheaper. And that's why I'd put it just ahead of the Z1 in third place on this list. Now we get into the two forks which perform best in this test. First up at second place is the Fox 36 Grip 2. Interestingly, it's the only fork here to have high and low speed rebound damping. So after a big impact, when the fork is returning from deep in the travel, it will tend to move faster than if it's just moving closer to the sag point. And so high speed rebound adjustment allows you to fine tune how the fork will spring back from deep in the stroke, somewhat independently from how it returns from earlier in the stroke. After experimenting either way, I ended up sticking with the high speed rebound setting that Fox recommend for my weight, but I ended up speeding up the low speed rebound so that the fork was really supple and responsive over small high frequency bumps, 
but when returning from deep in the travel after like hitting a big hole, it didn't ping back too much. There may be more reasons for this than just the rebound setting, but the 36 feels very controlled and predictable in that kind of situation. The Grip2 damper of course has high speed and low speed compression damping as well, but for the most part I left both of them fully open. I also used no volume spaces for the majority of testing with this fork. And despite all that, I never bottomed out or felt like the fork was diving too much or using too much travel. In fact, I was often surprised by how little travel I had used. Even when set fully open, the damper provides a lot of support. So you can really feel it holding you up through rough, steep sections. And while it never spikes, it never exactly feels super plush either. It's a supportive, sporty feel as opposed to a really comfortable, pillowy feel. But at the same time, it's immensely supple and kind of flutters over really high frequency chatter as well or better than anything else here. But even when fully open, it's not quite as comfortable or as liberal with its use of travel as the Lyric is over larger bumps. So in a longer run full of bigger rocks, the Lyric is marginally more comfortable in my opinion. Also, the air spring can't quite match the off-the-top sensitivity of the lyrics, which means that on a kind of a fast, loose corner where the front is lightly weighted, the lyric just seems to dig in and offer a, a little bit better traction. In my opinion, the best fork in this test is the RockShox Lyric RC2. The main reason for that is the debonair spring, which just like in the Yari, offers fantastic off the top sensitivity and a really soft feel pre-sag, which kind of sucks the fork down onto the trail. And even compared with the 36 Grip 2, in those kind of low load, off camber, loose corners, it feels like the front wheel just bites into the ground a little bit better. But then once you get past the sag point and into the middle of the travel, there's lots of support from the spring so you can really lean on the handlebars and get even more traction from the front wheel without the fork diving. This is most noticeable on steep terrain where you're doing a lot of prolonged braking, where the air spring can hold you up and stop the head angle changing as you apply the brakes. Perhaps because more of the support was coming from the spring rather than the damper, or perhaps because of differences in the rebound damping. In certain situations, the Lyric didn't feel perhaps as controlled as the 36, such as when slamming into big holes. But this is partly because I chose to set it up lighter on damping because you have the option to. Whereas the 36 is a little firmer damped when it's fully open. But because the Lyric allows you to go lighter on high speed damping, I found it was consistently more comfortable in terms of hand pain on long rocky descents than the 36. I did find that with the stock volume spacers, the fork was too progressive. It either sat too low in its travel or never used full travel. But once I'd taken both of the volume spacers out and increased the air pressure by 10 or 20 PSI, it worked really well. But straight out of the box, I think it ships with too many volume spacers. The Lyric and the Fox 36 are clear front runners in this test. And the differences between the two forks are fairly subtle compared to the massive differences you can make with setup. But in my opinion, the Lyric's more coil-like spring feel and the option to go a little lighter on high-speed compression gave it the edge in this test. When you take into account the fact that the Lyric costs 150 pounds less than the 36, the Lyric becomes a clear winner in this test. So there you have it, that's two and a bit months of testing condensed down into a few minutes. Please do let us know what you think of this test and particularly if you have any experience with any of these forks, we'd love to hear about it in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.